So this topic is about simplifying uh, expressions using properties of exponents. As, and we're going to keep things simple by just talking about uh, single variable expressions. Now to refresh our memories, there are like five or six rules or laws or properties of exponents. These are the things that we are uh, allowed to do when it comes to manipulating exponents. The first is called the product property. And that says if you have an exponential expression and you multiply him by another exponential expression, it is completely legal to merge them together as one object as long as you add the exponents. The quotient property says the exact opposite. If you have two exponential expressions and you're dividing them, you can merge them together as one as long as you subtract the exponents and the order is important. That's always the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. The power property of exponents talks about what happens when you mix exponents together. In other words, when you stack exponents. The rule says if there's an exponent outside of a set of parentheses, you multiply it to all the inside exponents. So you multiply the exponents when they're stacked on top of each other. These are the three main ones. And there are two more that we typically use on special cases when they come up. Uh, but these are the three primary ones. The other two uh, properties are the negative exponent property, which says if your exponential expression has a negative exponent, the only thing that that negative does is it reciprocates the base. In other words, it moves the base. So in this particular example, uh, the x, which has a negative exponent, would move to the denominator. But of course, if you already started on the denominator and you have a negative exponent, you would get moved to the top. And last but not least is the zero exponent property, which says almost anything to the zero power, it doesn't matter how simple or complicated it is, will always equal one. So your job is to use these rules to take a very messy, ugly looking expression and simplifying him down into a nice neat package. Now, this topic is sort of a, it's like a double-edged sword. It's, it's, it's really, really easy or really, really hard. There's, there's no real in-between. The reason being is that, well, there are a lot of ways you can do this. There's no set formula. There's no, you do this first, you do this second, you do this third every single time. Um, it's like solving an equation. You can go in any path you want. However, if you are struggling, I do have some suggestions for you. So you don't have to follow my suggestions, but I highly suggest that you do, especially if you find yourself uh, struggling. So here are my, you know, step one, step two, step three, do this every single time uh, rules. So my first suggestion when it comes to simplifying expressions using properties of exponents is to uh, break down parentheses. And that's usually going to be using the power property. Now, second is to simplify the numerator and denominator separately. And that's usually going to be the product property. Last, once you simplify the top and the bottom of a fraction as much as possible, you're going to apply the quotient property. The top exponent minus the bottom exponent business. Do you have to do this? Can I skip steps? Can I do two steps at once? Sure, you can. Only if you're comfortable with it. But again, if I'm a student that you know always gets this wrong and always makes little mistakes, I highly suggest you take the time, take it one step at a time, go slowly using these uh, using this particular order. So let's dive into an example here. Suppose I ask you to simplify o oh, two x squares over quantity 2x cubed squared times 2x. 
So if I were to listen to my suggestions, the first thing I want to do is break down any parentheses uh, if possible. And in this particular, uh, particular problem, I only have one set of parentheses here. So I'm going to apply the exponent rule or the power rule that says you're going to distribute that exponent into the inside exponents. Um, now a common mistake students make is uh, with regular numbers. They take this 2 and multiply that 2. You're not supposed to do that. These guys are exponents here. So there's really an exponent of 1 uh, which you're going to have to distribute to. Now notice we're not doing anything to this guy. We're not doing anything to this guy. Here's another suggestion. Any part of the problem that you're not working currently, just copy them down. So I'm going to copy down the 2x squared because I'm not doing anything. Then I'm going to distribute this exponent of 2. So that gives me 2 squared x to the 6 times. And I didn't do anything with this 2x, so I'll just go ahead and copy them down. My next suggestion is to work the numerator and the denominator separately. Don't look up and down, look side to side, the top and bottom separately. Again, there's really nothing I can do in the numerator. It's just a 2x squared. There's no timesing, there's no extra variables and stuff. So I'm just going to copy him down because I'm not going to do anything to him. In the denominator, I have lots of multiplication going on. Um, one thing with these properties of exponents is you only look at the like bases. So for example, I'm not going to look at this 2 squared with this x, say, because they're different keep the bases the same. So I'm going to look at this 2x squared with this 2 and according to the product property we add the exponents and of course there's always an itty bitty 1 here if you don't see it. So looking at the 2 here we have 2 plus 1 which of course gives us 3. Moving on to the x's there's a 1 here even though you can't see it. 6 plus 1 gives us 7. So now that we simplify the numerator and denominator separately, we can go ahead and use the quotient property. Again, you only look at the like bases. Anything that you don't see having an exponent, there's always a 1 there. So according to the quotient property, we subtract the exponent. Top minus bottom. I'll just go ahead and show my work for our notes here. So for the 2, we have 1 minus 3 in the exponent. And for the x, we have 2 minus 7 which gives us 2 to the negative 2, x to the negative 5. Last but not least is the negative exponent rule. Anything that has a negative exponent, according to the property, you're going to flip them. So notice how both the 2 and the x are in the numerator. So if I were to go ahead, because you know, if I were to make this a fraction, it's over 1. So when I flip them, I'll put the 2 and the x in the denominator. Well, I've moved everything. What's left in the numerator? If you move all the terms, there's always a one left over. So that would be your simplified form. Now, since we have regular numbers here, you can actually figure that out. 2 squared we know is 4. So I would have accepted either. This is a perfectly fine answer. As a matter of fact, I, I would much prefer this answer. But if you gave me this top answer, I would give you full credit. Let's just take a look at one more example, just so you have more than one in your books. Uh, let's say I ask you to simplify O x to the negative 3, big parentheses here, x to the negative 3 times 2 x to the negative 4 over x squared raised to the third problem. Right? Lots of negatives, big parentheses. But who cares? Let's follow the same tips. The first tip I would do is to break down the parentheses, which requires the product property, uh, the, the power property, which is distribution. Again, you're going to multiply uh, the, this 3 here to all the inside exponents. Now, so this guy has an exponent of 1. So distribute here, distribute here, distribute here, distribute there. That gives us x to the negative 9 times 2 to the 3 x to the negative 12 over x to the 6. My second suggestion is to take care of the numerator and denominator separately. So there's nothing to do in the denominator because it's just x to the 6. Uh, so let's simplify the numerator. So notice how this 2 here is just by himself. There's nothing I can do with him, so I'll just go ahead and copy him down. But for the x's, we can certainly use the multiplication rule. And the multiplication rule says you add the exponents. So for the x's, we have negative 9 plus negative 12 
should give us negative 21. And then the last step is to the division rule. And according to the division rule, we subtract the exponents. I'll go ahead and write this out uh, for our notes here. So as before, there's nothing I can do with the 2 to the third power because he's just by himself. So I'll go ahead and write him down. And then for the x's, it's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. And that gives us negative 25. Last but not least, if you have any negative, uh, or 27, I guess, sorry, 27, <laughs> I can't subtract. Uh, last but not least, uh, if there's any negative exponents, which we do here, go ahead and flip them. So see how this x is in the numerator, so when I flip them, he'll go in the denominator. This 2 cubed here had a positive exponent of 3, so you do not flip him, that 2 cubed stays on top. So there is your simplified answer. But of course you can figure out 2 cubed. That's going to give us 8. So this right answer is the better looking answer, but I'll accept the left answer. So that's how you do this topic, simplifying uh, using properties of exponents when we're only working with one variable.